friends, welcome back to another Sunday Mass. I hope you have had a great week and that you managed together as a family to pray the Holy Rosary in this month of October. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for the many blessings that you have given us. Jesus, help us to follow your example to persevere in doing good. Holy Spirit, guide and inspire us to be God's hands and feet to love and serve others. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and encouraging. We are always inspired by your sharing and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. No, I tried using my own cup this week, and it was hard. There were times I forgot to bring my cup along, and times when the lady at the shop got frustrated as it was more trouble for her, and also times when I felt so tired to have to hold on to my cup and spend time washing my cup when my friends just threw the ass away. But guess what? I managed to use 10 fewer plastic cups this week just by making that one decision. Well, sometimes doing things that are good can be tiring and inconvenient and we might face some challenges too. But that's okay because God sees our efforts and smiles upon us as we persevere in doing good. Let us sing this song together to thank God for the goodness He has shown us and for loving us every moment of our lives. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so Of the goodness of God 
Hey Joy, aren't you supposed to be doing some planning for the next beach cleaning outing? Yeah, it's next Saturday. And that's why you're playing games on your phone. <sighs> no gob, it's just that last Saturday, no one turned up. No one wanted to come and clean the beach with me. My friends thought that it was too hot and too dirty. Maybe they're right. I mean like no one will even know whether we clean the beach or not. Maybe I should just stop planning for it. Have you ever felt strongly about doing something good, like how Joy feels that it is important to clean the beach? It may be gathering some toys to donate to the children's home for Christmas, volunteering at a local charity, befriending some elderly in the community, or making an improvement in your school or church. It is sometimes hard for us to start doing these things. It may be even harder to get others to join us in our efforts. And some may even find it troublesome, like the lady at the shop did with Joy's request to fill her drink into her reusable cup. Doing things that are important, good and right may not always be easy. Our efforts may not be noticed and we may not be rewarded for it. But don't give up. Persevere and keep doing the right thing even when no one is looking. Joy, I don't think you should be thinking that way. But isn't it true? I'm tired of being the only one who cares. Just because no one wants to join you, it doesn't mean that it is not an important thing to do. Think of all the trash that you will help remove so the cute little otters and other animals won't get hurt or trapped. Yeah, maybe, but still no one cares. That's not true. Someone will. What? Who? God. God knows everything, right? So even if you're the only one cleaning the beach, God sees your efforts. He sees the love and care you have for his creatures and the environment. So don't give up, okay? If you keep doing what is right, others will notice what you're doing. And they'll understand why it is important and join you too. I guess that's true. I might be the only one cleaning the beach next Saturday again, but I know my effort won't be wasted because I'm doing something good. That's right. Thanks, Gough. I better get to work on planning for the beach cleaning outing. It can be tiring to keep doing the right thing, like how Joy was tired of being the only one who cared about cleaning the beach. God wants us to keep doing what is good and right, no matter how tiring it may be. Galatians 6 9 says, So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. This week, let us keep doing what is good and right, even if it is small. God sees our efforts and will smile upon us. It is definitely better for us to do just a little good then not at all. Now let us sing this song together as we allow God to lead us and guide us in doing good for Him and His people, especially in difficult times. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures you won't walk out, your great love will In my troubled sea, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, oh. My life now 
on the 15th of October, we celebrated the feast of St. Teresa of Avila. She was a Carmelite nun and the first woman doctor of the church. Teresa was a woman for God, a woman of prayer, discipline and compassion. Her heart belonged to God. She is well known for her improvements that she brought to the Carmelite order. But in doing so, she was misunderstood misjudged and opposed in her efforts. Yet she struggled on courageously and faithfully with her weaknesses, illness and opposition. In the midst of all of this, she clung to God in life and in prayer. Saint Teresa teaches us, Christ has no body now on earth but yours, no hands, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes with which Christ looks out, his compassion to the world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless us now. Let us learn from St. Teresa of Avila to be Christ's hands and feet, to persevere in doing what is good and right, even when it is not noticed and not rewarded. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one Mass minute. When your family or your classmates need to decide what to do together, you meet up and talk it over. Last weekend, Pope Francis opened an important meeting for our church to talk about its future. This meeting is called a synod, from the Greek word for walking together. The Pope wants to hear our ideas and our concerns so he can lead us closer to God. Since there are a billion Catholics in the world, we can't all meet up at once. So Catholics in each diocese will meet and their bishop will take their ideas to the Pope in Rome. Who else will be at the Synod in Rome? Well, Jesus said, Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am with them. We pray that Jesus will be with our leaders in Rome to help them make good decisions for us. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, Take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and learning more about doing the right thing, even when it's difficult. There's nothing like giving God our hearts and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together. On the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, 17 October 2021, we offer up this Mass for those who have experienced suffering that they may find strength in sharing Christ's passion. Join us in singing the processional hymn.
Hello children, parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles. Welcome to this Eucharistic celebration for Mass with Children. Many of you would be thinking, why am I wearing red today, right? This is the 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time. In Ordinary Time, we always use green colour. But children, you know what's happening this weekend? All over the world, in every diocese, the Holy Father is asking the churches to celebrate the Mass to the Holy Spirit because I'm going to introduce to you a word here, a synod is beginning or a synodal process is beginning. I'll explain that a little bit more in the homily later. But what's a synod? The synod comes from two Greek words, syn and hodos. Put together, it's synod, meaning to say a journey together, walking together, walking alongside one another. And that's what a church is supposed to be. Going through a synodal process so that we can be with Jesus, who is always walking with us on the way. All right, children? So let us begin the celebration, invoking the Holy Spirit to be with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather here today to celebrate this Holy Mass, we recognize our faults and our failings, and very often, our human ambition to want the best for ourselves. Today in our Gospel, Jesus reminds his disciples what really, it mean, what really it means to be a follower of Jesus, to be a disciple of Jesus, and that is to walk together with Jesus as he himself even walks to his crucifixion. And so, dear sisters and brothers, this day as we celebrate this Eucharist, let us now humbly turn to the Lord asking God to forgive our sins for the many times we have failed to walk faithfully with Jesus on this road. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
O Lord, ruler and guardian of your church, pour out, we pray, upon your servants a spirit of truth, understanding and peace, that they may strive with all their heart to know what is pleasing to you, and then pursue it with all their strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has been pleased to crush his servant with suffering. If he offers his life in atonement, he shall see his heirs. He shall have a long life, and through him what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over. He shall see the light and be content. By his sufferings shall my servant justify many, taking their faults on himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the letter to the Hebrews. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the supreme high priest who has gone through to the highest heaven. We must never let go of the faith that we have professed, for it is not as if we had a high priest who was incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident, then, in approaching the throne of grace, that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached Jesus. Master, they said to him, we want you to do us a favour. He said to them, what is it you want me to do for you? They said to him, Allow us to sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You do not know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup that I must drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I must be baptized? They replied, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I must drink, you shall drink. And with the baptism with which I must be baptized, you shall be baptized. But as for seats at my right hand or my left, these are not mine to grant. They belong to those to whom they have been allotted. When the other ten heard this, they began to feel indignant with James and John. So Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that among the pagans, their so-called rulers lord it over them, and their great men make their authority felt. This is not to happen among you. No, anyone who wants to become great among you must be your servant, and anyone who wants to be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man himself did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear children, parents at home, I started off the Mass with an introduction explaining that this whole weekend, in all dioceses around the world, the Holy Father is asking each diocese to commence what we call the diocesan phase of the synodal process of the synod. Last weekend, on the 9th, 10th of October, 2021, the Holy Father inaugurated the synodal process at the Vatican and St. Peter's Basilica. And one week later, which is this weekend, we are all encouraged to continue with this inaugurational process. Now, what is this whole synod about? I told you at the start of Mass, children, that the word synod comes from two Greek words, syn, S-Y-N, and hodos, H-O-D-O-S, hodos. When you put them together, you get the word synod. What does it mean? A synod is actually when the Holy Father calls the bishops around the world for consultation, for a meeting, and they are journeying together, walking on this journey of life walking together so much so that the church is also like a pilgrim on this earth. And as we are all disciples, pilgrims on this pilgrimage, what are we doing? Are we just walking aimlessly? Are we just walking, having fun? Or most importantly, the synod is to tell us that we are walking on this journey together and listening to the Holy Spirit's prompting. And that is why this theme of the Synod, which is going to end on October 2023, for two years we begin with the diocesan phase, and then from April 2022 right up to 2023, it's the continental phase where all the dioceses in the respective conferences will come together and submit their reports. And then the Holy Father will call the bishops together, a representative from each of the conferences around the world. For us in Singapore, we belong to the Malaysia, Singapore and Brunei Conference. And this synodal journey is where we are encouraged to listen. The theme that is given for the synodal process is communion, participation and mission. I will elaborate towards the end of this homily. But before that, hearing what the Holy Father has to say last weekend, he speaks about three very important themes, which is an encounter, which is to listen, and most importantly, it is to discern. Encounter, listening, 
discerning. These are very Catholic terms, especially, dear children. Today's gospel tells us what it means to have an encounter with the Lord. We are told that James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached Jesus, meaning to say that they had an encounter with Jesus. They knew Jesus was alongside them, but they still have not fully understood Jesus' message. So when they went up to him, they said, Master, we want you to do us a favor. Jesus acknowledged their encounter, and Jesus responded by saying, what is it you want me to do for you? And notice this request from James and John. Allow us to sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. Now this is a very human request, right children? We all make requests from our parents. We make requests from our teachers. We make requests unto God. We ask for things. And it's not wrong in itself, but what are we asking for? What purpose? What is the reason for it makes a big difference. In the case of James and John, it seems they wanted to claim glory. It seems they wanted to claim acknowledgement with Jesus because they said, allow us to sit one at your right hand, the other at your left, at, in your glory. They didn't know what they are asking. If you've been following Mark's gospel over the past few weeks, dear children, you would know that St. Mark was trying to tell all his readers that the disciples could not fully comprehend Jesus' message. At one stage, a few verses before this, they were arguing who is the greatest. And today's gospel passage, even despite the fact that Jesus said for the third time he was going to die, the disciples literally didn't, it didn't matter to them. All they wanted was to be seated in glory with Jesus. And then Jesus responded by saying, you do not know what you are asking. You see what happened? Jesus was engaging them in this encounter. Jesus was leading them to the next level, which is to listen. The disciples just asked for positions of authority, positions for glory, but Jesus was getting back to them, going into their hearts and saying, do you know what you're really asking for? Because being my disciple, it is just not about claiming acknowledging that you are with me. Being my disciple entails drinking the cup that he has to drink, being baptized with Jesus, and most importantly, to journey with him. That's what the synod is all about. It is walking together. It is journeying together. It is acknowledging the fact that, yes, Jesus has always been with us. You know, children, the early church started like that. There was no agenda. There was no solution. They began because of a resurrection experience. A resurrection experience that had them encountering the risen Lord. And then they began to walk on their journeys. You recall the story of the two disciples walking on the road to Amos from Luke's Gospel? You also know the stories of how the many disciples were walking in the Acts of the Apostles? If you have not read these stories, read them, children, especially from the Acts of the Apostles. Why? Because it shows us what the Christian journey is about. It is walking together, journeying together alongside Christ. In the case of the two disciples who walked on the road to Emmaus, they didn't even recognize Jesus who was walking along them, right? Until they invited Jesus into their hearts, into their homes, and they recognized Jesus at the breaking of the bread. Which means and tells us that what the Holy Father wants the church to do is to recognize that as we are on this journey walking together, Jesus is with us. Jesus is always with us and Jesus is inviting us to carry our crosses. And that is why it leads to the second point of the Holy Father's uh, message last weekend when he says besides the encounter, there is this listening. Listening, dear children, is different from just hearing. Eh? Hearing means I hear the sound, but listening entails using my mind to recognize what is that sound telling me. We hear the school bell, we know it is recess time. But the listening is, it is a message that I change from one period to the other period, right? The listening tells me that I'm moving on to a next activity. 
the Holy Father says, as we walk on this journey, do we listen to this Holy Spirit? In the case of James and John, they listened, they heard the message, but could they absorb the message? Jesus tells them, as for seeds at my right hand or my left, these are not mine to grant. They belong to those whom they have been allotted, those who have been allocated. And then notice the reaction in the gospel today, children and parents. When the other 10 heard this, they began to feel indignant and angry with James and John because they felt that, hey, if James and John could have that request, we also want it. That's not listening. That's just voicing out their concerns, their desires, their ambition, their wants, without hearing first what Jesus needs of them. What the Holy Father reminds us, encountering, listening, all these will lead us to the very big word, which I think I spoke to you a few months ago, the word discerning. To discern is to allow the Holy Spirit to work within our hearts. To work within our hearts so much so that when we hear or when we listen to a something, do we get the message behind it? Do we see if the Holy Spirit wants us to act upon this particular decision or not? Discernment, dear children, is so important for us because it helps us to realize our vocation in the kingdom of God. Discerning helps us to do the things that the Holy Spirit wants of us. It's not about just doing things of what we want, like James and John, and in the case of James and John, they only wanted positions of authority or power, but discerning is to voice our concerns, voice our needs, listen to what the Spirit wants of us, and most importantly, to act upon it. So Jesus gave a mind-blowing response, right, children? He says, You know that among the pagans, their so-called rulers lord it over them, and their great men make their authority felt. This is not to happen among you. And Jesus goes on, If anybody wants to be first, he must be the slave of all. That's what listening, listening to Jesus is about. Following his example, being of service to one another. And that's what this theme of the Synod is about, children. The theme is communion, participation, and mission. Let me address your parents, children. Dear parents, you might have heard already, as I said, the synodal journey is about a process of walking together. And as adults, we walk along with our children, we lead our children, we bring them closer to Christ. The Holy Father is engaging the whole world by saying, let us now be in communion as we journey together. Let us participate in this mission of the church together because communion and participation leads us to a mission. And what does he mean by this? Communion is not saying that all of us must be the same. It's not uniformity. The aim is not for us to be the same, but rather to walk forward together, sharing a common path, embracing our diversity. We are in communion when we recognize that we are all of the same faith. We believe in the same God, and this same God is inspiring us to move ahead. That was how the early church started. The early church had nothing in itself except the experience or the encounter of the risen Lord. The next theme of this synod is to participate where we recognize our differences and yet we join in, we share as the laity of God. We acknowledge different denominations and religions around us. People who experience poverty, those who are marginalized, we share in what they are going through. That's to participate. That's to have a first-hand experience of the sufferings in the world. That's what Jesus is saying. If you really want to be my disciple, are you willing to participate in my mission of carrying the cross? That's what our Christian faith is about. And finally, dear parents and children, the Holy Father wants us to reinvigorate our sense of mission. And the mission here is that Every Christian has a vital role to play in the mission of the church. In whatever capacity we are, at whatever faith level we are at, where we have been planted by God in our lives, we have a mission. And that mission is to let the glory of God shine forth and to let Jesus work through us as vessels. We are to be reminded that as lay persons, we have that special mission. That mission is 
to witness to the gospel in all parts of human society. And so my dear brothers and sisters, dear children, as we commence on this synodal journey, we ask the Holy Spirit to be with us. That's why we are invoking the Holy Spirit. That's why the vestments are read today. That we cannot walk on this journey alone, but we want God to be a part of this journey so that we can be on this mission to transform the places that God has placed us in. Amen. Let us now stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we await with longing the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, dear brothers and sisters, let us with renewed devotion beseech his mercy that, as he came into the world to bring the good news to the poor and to heal the contrite of heart, so in our own time also he may bring salvation to all in need. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For God's holy church, that it may be a light to the nations and the universal sacrament of salvation, walking with all peoples to the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and the holy faithful people of God in the Archdiocese of Singapore, that the celebration of this synod may help us to discern God's will and to boldly carry it out. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all civil and public authorities, that they may always seek the common good, acting with justice and integrity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the lonely, the oppressed and the suffering, that they may never be discarded, but rather treasured and cared for as the face of Christ in the suffering world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, gathered here, that this synodal process may lead us ever deeper into the communion of the Church, foster our participation in it, and equip us to go out on mission. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us take a moment for our personal intentions and the intentions of our family and friends who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church. For you yourself are the source of all devotion, and grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Look upon the offerings of your servants, O God of all compassion, and bestow on them the grace of your light, that they may have a true understanding of what is right in your eyes, and boldly carry it out. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as a sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so, with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church, as one voice we acclaim. are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, 
we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your church, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon, where true charity is dwelling, God is present there. By the love of Christ, we have been brought together. Children, parents, grandparents, now is the time we enter to spiritual communion, where we silently offer up this Mass and our intentions and our thoughts, our worries, our concerns, as we walk this journey together. So let us keep silence to welcome Jesus into our hearts. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that You are present in the most holy sacrament, I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Grant, we pray, O merciful God, that the holy gifts we have received may confirm your servants in the truth and prompt them to seek the honour of your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Children, before we have the final blessing, we'd like to pray the prayer that was specially written for this synod. Um, it is flashed across your screens if you join me in this prayer. It's called the Ad Sumus, meaning to say it, we stand before the Lord together. It's a prayer for the invocation to the Holy Spirit for an ecclesial assembly of governance or discernment. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. 
we are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and from what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Children, if you'd like to have this prayer, you can find it on the website of the Vatican website or even of our Archdiocese's uh, website. Uh, we've got the things loaded up or populated in this website regarding the Synod. Um, take a look, and this is something that we'd like to walk together, at least as it climaxes um, in April 2022. That's the diocesan phase. And after that, the continental phase. And eventually, we'll basically is to listen to one another, to listen and journey as disciples of Jesus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Each of us have received many gifts and blessings. The most amazing and precious gift of all is the gift of God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. The single gift more than 2,000 years ago has empowered the Church to share God's love all around the world and touch countless lives. The early Church could grow because of the love and sacrifice of millions of us apostles, martyrs, missionaries, and ordinary people, all disciples contributing our share for church and society. As we celebrate the 200th anniversary of our Catholic faith in Singapore, 
each of us have been given gifts of time, talent, and treasures, not to be used for ourselves, but to be used for this mission. If we reflect on our lives, God has blessed you and I and everyone abundantly and without fail. As in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, verse 1 to 15, the young boy immediately responded to the situation and made a difference by offering his five loaves of bread and two fish. It was in deep trust that God, our Lord Jesus, will be able to fix the challenging hunger situation of the crowd. To resource the pastoral plan, the Archdiocese needs your financial support in several areas. For Catholic education, for the growth of families, especially our youth, for the development of church leaders, for the catechesis, formation and evangelization of all Catholics, for the care of our shepherds, for scholarships for church workers, for a digital church, for the premises we need to operate, including a new Catholic hub. Let me begin by thanking you all for your generosity in supporting Catholic Foundation. We all have different roles to play. Whatever God has given to you, we must give back to God and to the community. The church exists for humanity. So in giving to the church, you are helping us to give back to society. And we hope that you will continue to support and to help to bring more people to support Catholic Foundation. Join the gift community to realize our pastoral vision of a more vibrant, evangelizing and missionary church. Scan the QR code and pledge today or visit catholicfoundation.sg.